In clashes between protesters and Bangladesh police, two people have died on Sunday, raising the death toll from religious hardline protests against the visit of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to 13 in Bangladesh. The protesters, mostly from the religious hardline group Hafazat e Islam, were upset at the visit of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi as Bangladesh marked 50 years of independence, accusing him of stoking communal violence against Muslims in India. Five people died on Friday and another six the next day on Saturday after police shot at demonstrators in several main districts across the Muslim-majority nation of 168 million people. Two others, a 19-year-old and a 23-year-old, died in the eastern district of Brahmanbaria after officers opened fire in clashes in the rural town of Sarail on Sunday, a police spokesman told AFP news agency. Protesters stormed a highway police station, torching it and injuring at least 35 policemen. Police opened fire in self-defense, the spokesperson told AFP news agency. Bangladesh's Home Minister Asadu Zaman Khan called for the protests to be halted. At another protest in Narayan Ganj, just outside the capital Dhaka on Sunday, Hefazat supporters chanted action, action, direct action as they blocked the key highway linking Dhaka with the port city of Chittagong. Hundreds of demonstrators burnt furniture and tires on the roads as they chanted anti-Modi slogans and called on authorities to investigate earlier shootings. The Congress demanded disqualification of all eight United People's Party Liberal UPPL candidates in the Assam Assembly elections for the party's promise that if elected to power, it would facilitate recruitment of surrendered militants of disbanded National Democratic Front of Boroland NDFB, in Indian Army and paramilitary forces. After Inside NE News filed a report raising the matter with the Defence Ministry to find out if there was any such provision for political parties to promise jobs in defence sector, All India Congress Committee spokesperson Gaurav Valhab asked UPPL's ally BJP to answer on behalf of UPPL if such a commitment was made by the Army. If the army has not given any such assurance, the party should apologize to the people for the misleading promise. I also urge the Election Commission of India to disqualify the UPPL candidates for the misdemeanor if it cannot come up with satisfactory answer to establish its claim," Gaurav Vallabh said. UPPL chief promote Boro while releasing the party's vision document in which the party promised jobs in military and paramilitary forces. To the former rebels. Assam Congress President Ripun Bora has asked the people of the state to hit politics of hatred, violence and divide out of the park even as Assam is heading for the second phase assembly elections scheduled to be held on April 1. With the Assam Assembly elections approaching slog overs, things are becoming clearer. I appeal to the people of Assam to continue the momentum and hit politics of hatred, violence and divide out of the park," Ripun Bora said while interacting with media persons in Guwahati. The kind of support we have received from the people of Assam is unparalleled. The people have responded magnificently with ground reports indicating that the people putting their trust in Congress's five guarantees, Assam Congress Chief Ripun Bora said. Ripun Bora said the Congress government has always been about the people's voice. The youth of Assam have shown an overwhelming support towards our job guarantee portal. There have been more than 1,75,000 registrations already, he said. As an emergent second wave of the virus makes itself felt in other parts of the country. Over the last 24 hours, Delhi has reported over 1,800 fresh infections and the number of active cases has crossed 7,000, the highest since September last year. The city appears unprepared at the moment to deal with a major surge. Some private hospitals have started running out of beds in the intensive care unit or ICU for COVID patients. According to the Delhi government's Corona app, four of the five key hospitals in the city have no bed with ventilators available in the ICU. 
hospitals are now making preparations to meet a COVID surge. We are making appropriate arrangements with rise in cases. The infrastructure is being strengthened, said Dr. Sandeep Budhiraja, the group director of Max Hospitals. The government has urged people to maintain COVID-appropriate behaviour to avoid the situation Delhi was last year when almost all the hospitals had run out of crucial healthcare infrastructures as the infection surged in November.